Hello everyone, this is Leo at Open Source Project Earth, working on sustainable food, and I'll be explaining the automated bell siphon. An automated bell siphon is a method for automatically adjusting water levels when using grow bed media in your grow bed. There's three parts. There's the standpipe, which sets the maximum water height in your grow bed. The media barrier, which simply prevents media from getting inside your standpipe and getting caught. And the bell, which is used to create the actual siphon effect. Now I'm going to go ahead and get this started since we're at our max height here. Now we can see water coming out. And I'll show you how it works, what's actually happening, and how to build one. So as soon as I put this on, we'll see the siphon. Beautiful. The automated bell siphon takes advantage of two physical phenomena, gravity and atmospheric pressure. Gravity is the force that pulls all objects towards a planet's core, and atmospheric pressure is a force exerted onto a surface caused by gravity pulling the air onto it. In this diagram, you can see the three parts I mentioned. The media barrier, the bell, and the standpipe. The media barrier has slits cut all along the side so water can flow through to the bell. The bell has slits cut only at the bottom so water can flow through to the standpipe. An important thing to note about the bell is the slits at the bottom set the minimum height the water will remain when the bed has been completely drained. The standpipe, which is completely covered by the bell, has a drain pipe coming from the bottom so it can drain directly into the fish tank and also aid in creating the siphon effect. The area we want to watch for a change in pressure is right inside the bell above the standpipe. Okay, so as water is pumped into the grow bed, not only is gravity keeping the water in the grow bed, but it's also pushing down on the surrounding air onto the water. Keep that in mind and I'll later explain why that's important. Once the water level gets to the height of the standpipe, water will start to trickle down into the standpipe and then get drained into the fish tank. Because the bell is airtight, no air can enter from the top nor the cracks at the bottom, so in order for the pressure to equal out, air must enter from the end of the drain pipe and fill the now empty space created when the water was drained from the bell. When there is so much water being drained that it blocks even the air coming from the end of the drain pipe from filling the bell, a vacuum is created, which causes the inside of the bell to have little to no pressure. Pressure that is, more importantly, less than the pressure on the outside of the bell. Now here's where the magic happens. If you remember, I mentioned that gravity is pushing down on the surrounding air onto the water. If we look at a time before the water level reaches its max, which means there's air in the bell, we can see that the air is pushing down on the water in both areas. Now, on the other hand, a vacuum is in the bell, so no air is pushing down on the water. Nothing is. It's free from resisting the air that's been pushing down on the water from the outside of the bell. Now, the atmospheric pressure might not seem that great, but we're used to it. It's actually a pretty strong force. So once the inside of the bell stops pushing down on the water, the water is instantly pushed into the bell, through the standpipe, then finally out the drain pipe. This will continue happening until the pressure on the inside of the bell equals that of the outside. So, water is quickly emptied until the water level gets to the first slit in the bottom of the bell. At that point, water isn't blocking the air from getting into the bell anymore. So the air, and hence pressure, is able to fill the low pressure space. So now that there's air in the bell, the pressure is able to push down on the water from the inside, equaling the amount it is being pushed from the outside. This stops the water from being thrown into the standpipe, so the water level stops dropping there. The whole cycle then repeats. If you'd like more information on how a siphon works and the physics behind it, please look up Bernoulli's principle. Okay, so the first thing you need to do before starting to build an automated valve siphon is figuring out the max height of your water. This is a 6 inch standpipe and this is an 8 inch standpipe. The pieces that make up a standpipe consist of a 3 quarter inch coupling, a 3 quarter inch straight through, a 3 quarter inch slip to 3 quarter inch female thread to 3 quarter inch male thread to 1 inch slip. I use a bigger end to try to get more water passing through to this bottleneck to try to get the siphon effect started more quickly. Now since the 3 quarter inch coupling is going to be glued inside the grow bed using plumber's epoxy putty, it doesn't need to be considered when calculating the size of your standpipe pieces. And also, since the straight through is the only piece that actually needs to be cut, a useful thing to do would be to assemble everything and then measure on the straight through where it needs to be cut, measuring from top down. The bottom part of your standpipe, the drain pipe, 
I didn't measure to be any particular size, just enough to actually go inside the fish tank, but consist of a three quarter inch straight through, a three quarter inch 90 slip, another three quarter inch straight, to a three quarter inch 45. The next things to build are the bell and media barrier. These are much easier. The media barrier is simply a four inch straight through with slits cut throughout it. We want water getting through all of this, just not the media. The bell is a two inch straight through with a two inch cap to seal it airtight. The slits for the bell start off at a half inch and go to the end, which means that a half inch of water will be left in the bed once air is able to fill the bell again and stop the siphoning process. I chose these diameters because I, start, I wanted to start off with a three quarter inch standpipe, which means I needed a two inch bell for clearance, which means I needed a four inch media barrier, just enough room to get one's fingers to remove the bell for inspecting and cleaning. I'd actually like to do more research and test out different sizes and record the speed at which the siphon process starts once water starts trickling down and the speed water is being siphoned out to scientifically calculate the optimal sizes that produce the fastest speeds. Now being that this is a completely open source project, I welcome anyone and everyone to also try out different sizes, record their speeds, and post them on the Facebook page so we can all collaboratively work on a project that will benefit everyone. Thanks for watching.